So welcome everybody. I'm so excited to see you all. And we got a jam-packed call with lots of great information. Um, and let's see, it is Tuesday, February 24th, just so we can remember that for anybody listening to the recording. And um, we are going to have, let's see, lots of things. We're going to have Nadine talk about the Fit Club she's been doing and the success she's been having. Um, and some people posted some questions. I'm sure she'll take more if anybody has more tonight. Rich is going to tell us about the men's group that he's a part of and just some takeaways. Um, Cause as far as I know, it's the first time they've done a men's um, group for coaches. Um, and then Jeannie and I are going to talk about the on demand um, thing that's coming up. Cause there was a sneak peek for anybody that got um, success club last month um, to have a sneak peek before they launch it in March. Um, and Terry's going to offer us a little inspiration tonight. <laughs> um, and um, and then I also want to make sure that we talk for a few minutes about some strategy for March, about groups and um, stuff like that, um, even if it's just at the very end, or we can I can just post about it. Some of us have been talking about when to start groups. We talked about that on a call last week, too, and I want to make sure everybody has something to be pointing people to. Um, so why don't we kick it off with, um, with Nadine and talk about Fit Clubs first. I'm going to unmute you and um, I'm going to mute everybody else so go for it okay hey um, do you know is there a way that I can look at my notes while I'm showing us presentation I don't know you mean on like a good a, a yeah it's like in a word document I was trying to print it but um, my daughter uh, wow. felt the need to print about 50 different sheets off of her website this afternoon <laughs> I'm out of ink. I can't print my notes. So you mean so, you have like a PowerPoint and I'll try it. I'll just see what happens. Okay. If, if you just put it if you just put it next to the screen, your PowerPoint, Nadine. Yeah. yeah you can do that. Okay. Or you can, if you want to send me the PowerPoint, I could you I can do my screen share and then you can Okay, let me do that. Let me do that. Send it in Facebook. Sure. Okay. Is it in Google? It's a no. It's a um, PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Well, I don't. I didn't save it to Google. It's just okay. Hopefully, I on can. my desktop right now. It won't let me send it. I'm just, I'll just go with it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, I don't want to take up too much time. All right, so. Get it going. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Okay, I'm getting these weird errors. Okay. Okay. So, Terry, is this what you're saying? Just go side by side like this? Oh. Hold on, you're muted. There you go. Sorry, we can see your notes too. I think there's a way you can just show like your PowerPoint, but oh, there we go. But okay. how do I see my notes? Do, is there a way for me to see my notes while you're looking at the PowerPoint? Now we just see your PowerPoint. Can you see your notes? Mm -mm. Okay, then probably not. <laughs> <laughs> we don't mind seeing your notes. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> you can do like you can share your whole entire desktop and then. Oh, okay. Okay. Hmm. 
Do you want to have someone else go first, Kathleen, and then I can figure this out? Or do you just want me to read it off of here? I, it doesn't matter. We can have somebody okay. else go if you want. Do you want to do that? Um, maybe, and then I can get it set up in a Google Doc. Yeah, sure. Does that work? Okay. All right, so why don't you stop sharing, and then we'll... Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Oh, sure. <laughs> okay, um, let's see. Rich or Jeannie, anybody want to go first? I have you muted, so. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Rich, are you up for? Yeah, I'll go. I'll okay. go. Awesome. Can everybody see me now? Yeah. All right. Um, well, I just wrote on pen and paper, so I shouldn't have any problem here. Um, all right, so the... The group that I'm in is the Dream Team Men's Coaching Group. Um, Melanie put it together with Paula Chavez and Nicola Steve. Um, I guess a few of my takeaways from the group are going to be the training. Um, I felt that it was directed more towards the men. Uh, they seem to simplify things for us men. I don't, I don't know if I'm calling us men stupid or not, but it seems to simplify things a little bit more in terms that we can understand. Um, I kind of like the way Melanie, she has this way of pushing you without actually pushing you with like, or else consequences, things like that. Um, Lots of tips on inviting follow-ups, personal development, the whole go for no thing, uh, objections, power hour. Uh, and I really like it because it's just a group of us men um, talking about problems that we have uh, as far as inviting women, uh, initiating conversations with women, uh, you know, the whole thing, trying to get other men involved, uh, the whole uh, the gym mentality that men have, and they got to go to the gym. And the whole training at home thing is for the women and their wives. And um, So, yeah, we share, we talk a lot, we share a lot of our problems, a lot of our objections, things like that with each other. Um, I've actually made friends with a few people in there. Uh, just a couple of us have really hit it off really good. We see that um, we pretty much talk every day about what's working for each one of us. And uh, I guess it's kind of helping everybody in, in as a whole um, doing that. So every day Melanie has us doing assignments. Um, different assignments, different tasks, all dealing with three vital behaviors. Uh, some days it'll be just something simple, like I want you to do five invites today, maybe three follow-ups. Uh, the one day she had us doing 20, she wanted us to do 20 invites, at least five follow-ups, uh, personal development, just basically three vital behaviors. Um, Right now, the last two days, our assignment has been power hour with at least five invites a day. Um, and that's where we're at. Uh, she shares a lot of videos and links to um, older team calls that she thinks might be helpful for us. Uh, Shakeology sharing, things like that. And... Uh, that's about where I'm at with that. I'm really nervous right now, but Kathleen said that you would all be gracious and kind people. <laughs> yeah, so that, I, I love it. I love the idea of this group because it is very different for a man to and try and invite, and it's this is such a female-dominated. It's so funny because the corporate people, are, are it's male-dominated. When I went to that training, it was like not not – entirely men but definitely more than half were men and then you look at all the coaches and we're like 
I don't know, 90% women or something like that. I don't know any statistics, but so I'm curious, Rich, like what are the, what are your takeaways about how you would invite women or how you would invite men or what, tell us some of the, the tips so that maybe we can even have the reverse idea when we're talking to men about it. What's the differences? Um, I'm still kind of up in the air with differences myself. Um, I just try to be kind of vague. I, I'm not like, I haven't been inviting like, hey, join my group, join my group. I've just been um, starting out with basic conversation, I guess. Uh, like if I add somebody, I'll follow their page for a day or so. Uh, like some things, comment some things, see where they're at with different things, and then maybe like private message them. Like uh, I don't, I don't know. I noticed that you've been going to the gym, or you've been thinking about healthier meals, or something of that nature. I've been learning to um, follow them more and see where what their needs are and what they're about instead of just like cold invites. It, it seems to be a little bit more personal. Um, it hasn't really paid off huge yet, but I am making a lot more relationships than I was before, which is like, hey, join my group, or hey, do you want to buy a challenge pack, or things like that. Yeah, got you, that makes sense, because I would think that wouldn't be as natural, not to stereotype, but as natural to, for men as it would be for women, I guess, to build the relationship first and then go in. Although I think all of us can relate to that idea. What about, um, like, is it the same for, if is this the advice the same for if you're talking like man to man versus man to woman or whatever, you know what I mean, for inviting? Um, they really didn't like give, they gave us some scripts, but um, I, don't, I don't know. I don't really like to follow the scripts that much. Uh, so a lot of the scripts were, I felt, still geared more towards women. Um, you know, they have the old, uh, like, this mama really thinks it's a great, uh, quick, easy go-to meal, you know, things like that. Um, but how do I put this? I've, I've just... Uh, I, I've, just kind of like abandon the scripts and kind of just go with the flow when I'm talking to somebody and see where the conversation goes. I try to control it a little bit more, but I, I, I want to see where they're going with it. And I, I've been, uh, I haven't been salesy with people anymore. I'm just trying to get a feel for people, uh, what they need and trying to like, ease into the beach body stuff. Cool. If, if that makes any sense to you. It does. Yeah. 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 Like before cool. I was like, okay, just buy a challenge pack, join my challenge group, join this group. And it really wasn't working. Um, I, I found that a lot of people would ignore me. I'm, I'm sure everybody gets that people ignore you or, or they talk to you for, a day and then it's just like silence now i feel that uh, with that approach you're uh, you're building more of a friendship they don't look at you as uh, you're trying to sell them something and more that you're trying to help them so that's what i took away from that anyway yeah that's great advice for anybody i think well, awesome. I'm really glad that they're trying that group. I think eventually it would be cool if, if you could run a group for men instead of having it be run by women. <laughs> but I love that they are taking that approach. And I think it's awesome that you're connecting with other guys because there just aren't that many out there. So it seems like a great idea. And it seems like almost an untapped market. Men, not totally untapped, but certainly much more than our, you know, kind of overall female whatever market. So. Well, according to Tommy Migrant, um, the men used to dominate this company. Uh -huh. And and then um, I forget which which woman it was, just like totally took over, he said. 
Nice. I guess in the beginning, like all the top 10 coaches were men. So, wow. That's something I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah, I think Lindsay was the top, first top female coach, but I didn't realize it was that dominated by men previously. Interesting. Well, thanks for giving us your insight. I appreciate it. And I, I'm glad that you're sharing some of the videos because I think it's helpful to us as, uh, you know, just in general to learn more, but also for any men on the team. And for I know some of our spouses are involved at least a little bit. So it's really great to get that perspective. So yeah, we didn't have a... I'm sorry, we didn't have a call last week, so they canceled the call last week. So I don't know if we're going to have one this week still or what. So there is, I'll put something in the group about that. Cool. Thanks. Awesome. You did a great job. <laughs> All right, let's, we're going to go back to Nadine. She sent me her um, PowerPoint. So I'm going to share that with you guys. And then we'll, um, Okay, you already unmuted. Let me just do that real quick. Do, 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 do. And move this up here. There. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I started my Fit Club last month, just at the beginning of the year. And I've been really happy with the response so far and <clears throat> just um, how it just feels like it's going so well. So, um, but definitely, you know, this is just one way to do it. And I know there's lots of other ways, um, but it's definitely a great avenue to help to try to add new people to your network and um, giving you a tool where you can provide a valuable service to people because that's a lot of what we're trying to do is just to show people how we can add value to their lives and that attracts them to us and so that's I think that's been a key for my group is I mean there had been several people that I had been talking to prior to starting the fit club but once the fit club started going um, I mean they almost committed almost immediately to ordering their challenge pack and getting started in a challenge group. So I think just the face-to-face -face, uh, communication sometimes is all that is needed <clears throat> to kind of seal the deal with people. And plus just building relationships with people has been really key. And, and not just me, but then the other women in the group also are building relationships. And, you know, I mean, I can hardly get them out the door sometimes because they're just <clears throat> they're going on and on, you know, sharing ideas with each other. So it's really building a, a, a nice community of people that are striving towards the same health and fitness goals. And so I feel that that's been a very positive thing. <clears throat> and, and without this fit club, I just, we wouldn't have had that opportunity for enough time, you know, for everyone to get together and do that. So it's really opened up a great avenue for us. Um, so the first thing that I did when I started my fit club and I started thinking about this actually last year, <laughs> it's been like a year long process. <clears throat> um, but then late last fall, I started really getting serious about it and talking to some people and started seeing that there was some interest in it. So I was, so my first thing was trying to find a location <laughs> and you can go to the next slide, Kathleen. Mm -hmm. Um, so it just happened that our church, um, is meeting now in a building that used to be a fitness facility, fitness center. So there's, um, all of our classrooms are previous racquetball courts. So <clears throat> the room there that you see the ladies exercising in, that is, was a racquetball court at one time. So that, I mean, it just worked out perfectly for us to be able to use our church facility to do that. So, um, <clears throat> you know, I just asked around and got some interest from a few ladies that I had been talking to and they, they all had said, yeah, we've been wanting to do this for a long time. Just no, didn't have anybody to head it up or we didn't know how to do it. And so it just, it came at the perfect time um, <clears throat> for this uh, scenario. Um, and then I, of course, I, I met with the leadership of the church who would be involved um, that I would have to get the 
go ahead from and they're very supportive and they told me right away that I could go ahead and get started. So I was ready to get going, but then I thought, you know, the holidays are coming up. Um, so I thought, you know, I really need to get the timing of this right. And so uh, my next slide talks a little bit about timing. Um, I was, I just wanted to make sure I took into consideration any major things that were coming up the holidays, of course. Um, and now people are talking about different sports seasons. Like um, some of the women are having conflicts because of their kids are in soccer or baseball and things like that. So we're trying to work around all of the different schedules with all of the ladies, kids and stuff. But um, so I think that's one major thing that is good to consider before getting started at all. And so we just really decided that January would be the best time to start because, you know, with all the New Year's resolutions, um, we get past the busyness of the holidays. It worked out great. I, I was really glad that we waited because there was like this ant anticipation. We were able to advertise it for a couple of months, start talking about it, get people interested in it, you know, get people committed, <clears throat> start advertising for it. And so then when we started, I think I had like 14 ladies the very first time. So I think that was good to, to hold off on it and just make sure that we started at the best time that we could. And so we're meeting on Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. And that seems to be working well for most people. So I think we're going to continue doing that for a while. And we're basically, we're usually out of there by 1030. So <clears throat> it still leaves people a lot of their day after we're done. Um, so after we decided when we were going to do it, and then I started advertising, which is my next slide. And um, <clears throat> I didn't do a whole lot because I already had the ladies that I had been talking to at the church, but I did have them, you know, to invite people that they knew and told them it's that they could invite their friends or family. Um, I set up an event, first of all, and I invited all of my friends that were local to the area and started posting in there different things about fitness and about the upcoming fit club. Then after I had some content in there, then I boosted the event. I paid um, the Facebook um, charges and I had it boosted just to the city that our church is in. And I had a few ex um, new people interested and I've had, I've, had some conversations with some people just because of that doing that so I think I'm going to continue um, boosting every once in a while to get some more people that I don't know coming to the fit club and then also at the church of course they they allowed me to advertise in their church bulletin uh, on their Facebook page it's on their website so the word is getting spread through our church page too. Um, you could also use community newsletters. Um, I looked into meetup.com, but they do charge a fee and I wasn't quite ready to do that yet. So I have that on the back burner that I may do at some point, but just not right now. I'm not going to. Um, I did make up some flyers to give out to people if they wanted to invite someone else. Um, and then after the initial event, I, I changed it over to a group page because in the event, I can't, it won't let me update it. After the event is over, I can't update it for the next date. And I don't want to lose everything that's in there because I have people's comments and I have different things that I've shared that I just want to stay all in one place. So I've just converted everything over to, into a group. And then I just post in the group every week the update about when we're meeting and where or if it has to be canceled for some reason. So that way it keeps it all central, central and I can just share posts from that group to my wall or to my fitness page. And that way it's, people can see it 
I can share it on my wall and then it sends people back to the group page if they want more information about the Fit Club. So it works, it works really well doing it that way. Plus I needed one more group to be in, so I thought might as well go ahead and set up another one. So, um, all right. So then after that, I started compiling a list of everything that I would need while I was there. And I took a picture there. Um, that was my very first day and it was, we were, um, we were kind of overlapping with another group. So we were kind of rushed to get out <laughs> and my table got kind of dis disarrayed, but, uh, before I got a good picture, but, um, anyway, I, I, the way we did ours is I, I borrowed a projector from somebody at the church and I use my husband's laptop because I don't have a DVD player on mine. <laughs> so, um, kind of mixed and match and everything. Um, then I just got a little set of speakers and I, hook it up. And so we have it projected up on the wall. It's kind of cool. It's real big. And then, um, so I just made my big list of items to bring that I, and so that way it helps me every week when I'm packing my bags too, to make sure I don't forget stuff. Um, but I actually have some bags that I just have dedicated to all my fit club and it just sits in a corner now. So I just have it and grab it and go, but I did make up, um, some little stands. I don't know if you can really see it on the table, but I made a stand um, that talks about what one of those about, about Shakeology, what it does for you. Um, then I made another stand that shows some transformation pictures. Um, and then I always have the Shakeology packets there. And I've actually had a lot of success with selling Shakeology packets at these because people keep wanting to try the different flavors and I think if they're hesitant about ordering, then they've been buying a lot of packets until I finally am like, you know, look, if you're going to keep buying these every week, you know, you might as well just order a challenge pack because you're going to save a lot of money. So, but it gets them to where they see the difference drinking it and then they want to keep getting more. So that's, that's been very, um, it's been a very positive response. Um, so I bring, I do bring different videos, uh, programs every week to put out on the table so people can see them. And I bring the containers for the 21 day fix. I bring the whole set for the 21 day fix and that it just generates a lot of interest, I guess, just seeing all the little containers and then people want to know, okay, well, how does this work? And so I think just seeing the containers helps people too to understand what it's all about. And it just draws them in and it opens up the um, conversation to be able to share more with people. So I bring, and then I also, of course, have um, everything to make Shakeology. I've been making Shakeology for everyone every week. Um, and that has helped, too, because even if they don't buy it, they get to try it. And I've had a lot of people who, after they've tried it a couple weeks, then they've decided to get some. Um, then I, there's also the waiver. You have to have everyone sign a waiver. So I have those, um, I made up a sign up sign in sheet. So I make sure I get everyone's contact information. I also put out a sign up sheet for anyone interested in joining a free clean eating group because that way they know that I offer those. And if they're not ready to join a challenge group, then, then I put them in my next free clean eating group. And I also, have a little handout about what clean eating is because sometimes people don't really understand what it's all about. So I just have a couple of bullet points about it and that way they can pick it up and take it with them if they want to look at that later on. And then I've also been bringing, I have like a recipe of the week. So I always have a recipe that I give to everyone every week and everyone really seems to love that. And then, you know, they'll come back the next week and talk about how great it was and, how their kids loved it. And so that's just another thing that I'm doing for them to um, <clears throat> feel like they're getting something out of it other than just coming and working out. So then as I'm talking to them, um, when they come in, I, I thank them all for coming. I get them signed in and fill out their forms. And then I'm, just do some quick introductions and share with them 
what it is to be a beach body coach and why I'm coaching. And, um, I'm not, I mean, I'm not having to do it as much anymore because a lot of them are repeat people. Uh, but if there are new people, then I make a, an effort to talk to them one-on-one -on -one afterwards <clears throat> so that I can share a little bit more with them. Um, then I tell them a little bit about the workout that we're doing each day. So I've been actually been trying to do a different program of some workout from a different program each time. So they get a really good variety and they can see, you know, not all the, not all the programs are the same and how they work are all totally different. So then I'll, I'll usually share with them about my challenge groups a little bit and you know talk about when those are coming up you know if there is a sale going on I'll talk about that um, <clears throat> and then I give them information about the workouts um, and then I, I I talk a little bit about clean eating too and I usually try to have a tip or something inspirational to talk to them about each week to I try not to, I don't want to, I don't take up too much time, like five to 10 minutes on all of this, but I think it, it, um, <clears throat> I think they really enjoy that. I like, I'll show an inspirational video or something and, you know, it gets them talking and sharing a little bit more about their stories. And a few times I've had some of the ladies, even before we start, I'll just say, you know, can you just share your experience these last few weeks? Cause some of them, I mean, they just, jumped right in with all the clean eating and I've had people that have lost like they lost like 12 pounds in three weeks and so just sharing their stories is motivating the other ladies too so that's been helpful um, so I do a little bit of that before um, just because afterwards it gets kind of crazy with making the shakeology and then everyone having all the questions about the programs and stuff so I try to get everything fit in that I want to share at the beginning and then afterwards everyone just kind of mingles and we do our Shakeology and then I talk with people about if they want to sign up for a program or anything like that and I've actually had um, another lady that's coming to the group my husband's cousin I kind of just um, drafted her to be my Shakeology person because it's, it gets kind of hard to do both so I have her to make it and then that frees me up to do some other stuff. So uh, then after the Fit Club is over, I usually try to get a picture of everyone either exercising or afterwards just do a group picture. And I try to post it in the group just to share with everyone, show everyone who came and tag them in it. And then I try to follow up with everyone who wasn't able to come <clears throat> that had said they would be there. I just want people to know that they're missed, you know, if they're not there. And <clears throat> then I follow up with everyone who did come to see if they liked it and get their feedback and stuff like that. So then I'll share some of that information in the group. And, and I've been starting to share some of their before and after pictures in the fit club group too. So I'm just trying to keep, it's almost, um, I don't know, like a storyline that keeps going and going so people can follow what's happening in the fit club. Okay. All right, Kathleen, if you go, so there's one of my ladies, she's lost like 15 pounds. So she's doing really well. Um, and then the very last page, I think I had some questions. Okay. Um, Okay, so these were some of the questions that you guys posted in the group. So I talked a little bit about getting the word out. Um, I know for me it's kind of, it's more um, just focused on the church side of things, but I am planning to do more of the event boosting, you know, maybe do an event boost or something like that to get it out even more. Um, and I am doing a lot with the Shakeology. I, I, don't, I feel like that's been a, um, a major place for me to really share about it. And 
And then everyone that's drinking it shares about it. So that's what really starts working really well is they start loving it even as much as I do. And then the other people hear it from the other members. And then it's like, oh, okay, well, then it seems even more real. Like it's not just me pushing it on people. Well, this stuff really is as great as I am saying that it is, you know, to hear it from other people. So I think that's been great. Um, and now for me, mine, the age ranges are, I mean, I think everyone in there is older than me, except for maybe one or two. So, um, you know, I've got forties, fifties, sixties. I mean, I think even one lady's in her seventies. So I have an older range of ladies right now. It seems like most of the younger ones have kids doing stuff at that time. So I don't know um, if we maybe have to find another time for that, but <clears throat> um, I've used so far on the exercises, we've done PIO, 21 day fix, T25. We did some of the Brazil butt lift. We did P90, P90X3. So I really am trying to get a big variety of the workouts just so they can see how versatile they all are. Because I mean, for, for them to say, Oh, I did a P90X3. We did the dynamics from P90X3. So, you know, I'm just showing them, look, you guys can do this. You know, it's just a matter of being consistent and keep doing it. You know, you can start with the less intense workouts and then just keep building up to it. So We'll do that, and um, and and then had the question: What if you have cold feet? And so, I I appreciated that question because that was me. I totally did not. Well, I wanted to have a fit club, but I didn't want to lead it. You know, I'm not a person that is comfortable being the person in charge. I mean, to to start something from nothing, that's just not the way I am at all. So when I had this opportunity, I was like, you know, I either have to just jump at this and take it and see what happens, you know, or I'll never know. So, and I told, I actually told Kathleen not too long ago, I thanked her because she had um, kind of pushed me like, I think you should do it. I think it would be great. And I've just seen such a, a jump in my business because of starting this, I think if you are considering it, just give it a try, you know, uh, it's totally worth it. So that's all I have. That was just my sign in sheet. I had put a copy of that at the end there. And I can share any of my forms if anybody needs forms or anything, I can post them in the group. Stop sharing. Nadine, that was awesome. The, the level of detail that you have, like really thought through so many things. I love the recipe of the week, like to, just kind of to bring people back. I mean, the whole thing and the way your table set up and the, I mean, it just really, you could see why you're making business off of it because it's really awesome. <laughs> it's like blows ours out of the water, know. doesn't it? What's that? <laughs> Blows hours out of the water, doesn't it? Oh, it's awesome. it's so <laughs> well, great. it is a lot of work. I mean, that's the other thing. It's a lot of work. But um, Jeff helps me every week. He helps me load everything up. He drives me there, helps me set up. He, then he leaves and he comes back and helps me tear down. <laughs> so um, you know, it is a good chunk of my weekend, but it's worth it, you know? And I actually want to say something. That's how I met Nadine was my mother-in-law goes to church with her and invited me to the group. And I haven't been able to go because I'm one of the ones with the kids and supports. But um, that's how I started. I was like, oh, great. There's a challenge group. I want to get in this challenge group. And then I was like, you know what? I want to be a coach too, Nadine. <laughs> so that's how I met Nadine. And um, I'm sure like that's just one story from it. I'm sure she's got plenty of other people that are kind of talking to her that aren't actually going to the group. Mm-hmm. That, that's how Shannon and I met also. She came to a fit club and it wasn't nearly as awesome as Nadine seems to be. <laughs> it's not that awesome. <laughs> but 
But I, I do want to say, for whatever it's worth, on our end, I find it really helpful. Shannon and I started running it together, and I find that really, really helpful because for a lot of the reasons you're saying for setup and like being able to mingle with people, and then also that whole thing that you were talking about, the social proof kind of that you know, somebody else is doing it. So for you, I think it's amazing that it's the people there that are speaking up, but it was helpful to us, I think, to have each other to, you know, if one of us is talking, then the other one can be like, yes, that's true for me as well. And you know what I mean? So there's something really powerful about that piece of it. So um, so I don't know if you guys would ever want to team up or whatever. I, I have found that very, very helpful. And then if one of us can't go and all that kind of stuff. Um, the, the one other thing, and I don't know, Shannon, if you want to say anything else, and if anybody else on here, I don't know if anybody else is running. Fit. Oh, Sarah's on here. You're running them too, right? Um, if you guys want to speak up about it too. Um, but the one other thing that we found helpful, I can say, is that we offer babysitting for our, because we do it during the week. And so for other moms, it, that I think that's a, a draw for, for whatever it's worth. But but anyway, the, the point being that if there's two of us there and for some reason our sitter couldn't show, then one of us would just stay with the kids and the other would um go with the uh with the group um do any does anybody else have questions for nadine or want to add anything about something that you're doing that maybe the group would find helpful do you i want to unmute you sarah because i know you've got one going well i um can wait can you hear me where's my microphone <laughs> can you hear me <laughs> okay <laughs> i thought it was on my headphones um I had mine going in December and January, and it was pretty good. The only hard part was we were doing it during the week, and it's really hard to find the right day where everybody can come. And it was on a Monday, so some people were traveling you know, in from town, and I was always kind of checking and texting, like, are you coming? Because I didn't want to go early and set up and do all this work, and like nobody showed up. I've had that happen, I had that happen a couple of times. So mine got to a point where I had like a consistent three or four ladies and I would just kind of check in with them a couple of days ahead of time to make sure they're coming. And then I would come in with them. But that's not, I don't think that's the ideal way to do it. I didn't advertise the same way that Nadine does. She's doing a really good job with that. Um, and it's just during the week, it's hard because, you know, on a you know, Monday morning at 930, a lot of people have things to do and I wasn't offering child care. Um, so... Sometimes I think the weekends would be better, but I know with all of, even my schedule, I can't do a weekend. Um, I think what I need to do is just pick a day and stick to it regardless of people showing up or not, and then really work to advertise it and make it go. And I think, again, it's like anything with Beachbody. If you stay consistent to something, in the end, it will pay off and it will start to build and grow. But in the beginning, it's measly and that's okay. Um, but if you believe in it and stay committed to it and people start talking about it and you're committed, other people will begin, become committed as well. I was not, I mean, I, I kind of had a schedule for two months and I wanted to see how it went and it was, it was great, but it was just, it was a little hard for me to even handle. So I was okay with it flopping for the time being, but, um, I think it's something that's very valuable and I would love to pick it up again and do it, especially since I have a great facility to use. Um, I feel like I should be doing these. So. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're, I mean, I think you're right on. I, at least I can speak for the one that we've tried to have here. That consistency is so important. And we, mm -hmm. we, um, we also do it during the week because that's what we have available to us with the church basement that we use and that you're so, you're right about that too. We really find it hard to figure out a time that works for everybody. It's everybody. Just mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah some, people, some people say, well, if you could have it like 45 minutes later, I could come. But then somebody's like, oh, well, I have something earlier. So I was trying to make it work, but I was like this, you know, I just have to set a time, make it consistent. And then over a couple of months, people start to free up their schedules so that they can go to that. Um, but I didn't consider, I didn't carry it on long enough to do that. Gotcha. Yeah, I had timing was a big issue with mine too. And I finally was just like seven thirty Monday nights the end. If you can be there, I'll see you. Mm -hmm. If not, oh well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you had your first one, right? Have you had two now? Yeah, I've had two now. How's but, it going for you? Um, it's going well. I mean, both Monday nights have been the worst nights of weather in our city ever. <laughs> That's right. So uh, the first night started snowing and icing and then the second night was last night which was like zero degrees literally 
but um, people still came and they've been interested. They've had a lot of questions. Um, I've been trying to do some of my neighborhood's really small, so um, and it's older. So I've been trying to do a lot of the lighter, no equipment workouts. Um, but people, you know, the same people came back. They seemed very interested in it. They had a lot of questions about the Shakeology. I've I've brought, you know, each week I've done a different recipe that I've made so they can see that there are different tasty ways to drink it. And um, I took samples last night. I finally had sample packets come in. And um, uh, I made a Facebook page too. Nadine shared all her information with me, which was very helpful. But before that, I had already done a Facebook page because um, our neighborhood has a Facebook page. So I kind of got a group of people who had general interest from there. And then our, my neighborhood also does a community newsletter. So I wrote up an article for the newsletter um, and put like a little ad in the newsletter so people could email me as well. And, um, you know, in case they weren't on Facebook or anything. And yeah, so I mean, I didn't, I really thought I was like, if, if I got, you know, I was like, it would be a miracle to get anywhere near 10 people. And with the blizzard the first night I got eight. So I consider that a success. So we'll see where it goes from here. Yeah, very cool. It's so great. There's something so powerful about the in-person stuff, I think. I, I think I was saying before, at least I found with our Fit Club, you know, with the times that it was successful, the conversion rate was so much higher than the online stuff. You know, if it's like three of 10 or two of 10 or something for in-person, I think it's, you know, five or six or something. I don't know. It's just so much higher. Um, so that's awesome. And we could keep talking about it if, if this seems like a good topic as we move forward and as people, I know some other people are interested in getting them started. Um, so we can definitely keep this on our radar or even start another Facebook group for Fit Club. You know? <laughs> people running Fit Clubs. Um, yeah, you can ask a question, of course. Yeah, wait, let me unmute you. There you go. <laughs> I've lost you. Oh, I can still see you. Okay, if you can see me, then it doesn't matter if I can see you, I guess. I don't know. The <laughs> but um, in, as far as, it sounds like you all have found a neutral location. Um, do you think that there's something negative to having, like, I have a place in my house where I work out, and I could probably fit three other people there, because I don't know how quickly that I can find another location like that. As far as my initial concern would just be safety, but it would be poor more people that I would know through other people or through, you know, myself. But do you think there's a negative to only having like three other spots with yourself? Do you think that people are too on the spot because it sounds like you all are seeking bigger groups? Is it more of a waste of time? What, what are your thoughts with that? Because I can see it being more personal and me not having to cart as much stuff, just take my stuff downstairs to make my shake, but I'm just looking for some feedback on what your feelings would be with those of you who've had it. I don't know if anyone has, I, I actually have done that before. I, I don't have a very big basement, but I've had one or two people over at a time to try stuff out and I thought it was awesome. <laughs> I mean, it was just much more, it was friendly and you know what I mean? I you could probably tell for me, I'm not a very like pressure oriented person, but I'd be like, Hey, you want me to make you a shake? Let's do it. Okay. Or no. Okay. That's fine. Next time, whatever. You know what I mean? So I'm all for it. I, if it's like friends of friends, I might, you know, I have an attorney for a husband. I might, I would still suggest having them sign the waivers <laughs> and maybe yeah. just like put it on beach body. Be like, Hey, we got to do this for, because of what, you know what I mean? Wherever your comfort level is, but that would be my one thought. I don't know if anybody else wants to share. I was just going to say, I, the only thing that would worry me would be the liability of it being on my property. But if it's people you know, then I would feel comfortable doing it. Uh, you know, stra stranger things have happened sometimes. Sometimes <laughs> people you think you know. So, yeah, I think the waiver is a good idea. I just wondered as far as if you thought it would be less effective because it's a small group. Because I'm thinking maybe that might be how I would have to start initially and then you know, go on from that like find someplace else. Yeah, I mean, I think anytime you're building connections, it's going to be good. I mean, small group or not, you get to know them and 
then like you said, they know somebody else and they know somebody else. So. Nice. All right, we've only got a couple minutes left. So let's have um, Jeannie tell us a little bit more about on demand. And if we need to continue that discussion, we certainly can um, later. Oh, let me unmute you here. There you go. I think we did that. All right. Um, it's FAQ 1275 is really where I got most of my information. And there is a informational YouTube video that you can access if you go to FAQ 1275 and just click on the link. I didn't get a chance to watch it yet, but um, one of the big things is that there was talk about the club membership going up from what it is now, and they're not gonna do that. It may go up in the future, but as of right now, it's staying the same. Um, all the programs on demand, which include P90X, P90X2, P90X3, Insanity, TurboFire, Brazil Buttlift, 10 Minute Trainer, Shailene Extreme, Asylum Volume 1, Tony One on One, they're all included with the club membership. There isn't like a fee for if you want, you know, for the number of videos you watch. Um, they're also will be available on iPhones and Androids and iPads, I guess, as long as you have the most updated browser, you won't need an app. Um, Body Beast was supposed to be one of the programs, but it's not. They're gonna, they're expecting to add it soon though. The videos are only in English for now, so no Spanish for Spanish speaking people. Um, it's exclusive to club members. All the nutrition guides will be available for download on the demand web page. And let's see. That's really the gist of it, I guess. Um, everything's pretty straightforward. The site is really easy to use. I wanted to do a screen share, but you can't access it anymore until the launch, which I believe is March 2nd or 3rd. Um, but basically you just click on the program that you want and push play and it starts streaming for you. So as soon as you have a club membership and on demand is launched, it will be available to stream. So. And there were previews, right? I, I don't, I was looking at it when it was up. There were previews like of some of the other workouts. You could they, try like one. They didn't. Actually, that is one thing I did miss. They have on the facts and questions that there's a free surprise gift for customers. And what that is, is three bonus workouts that they can choose, which are the 21 day fix dirty 30, focus T25 speed 1.0, and 10 minute trainer ab workout. So they're adding those as a free gift for customers that sign up. So, and there is a challenge pack available with the Shakeology and the membership. And I think it's going to be like $140 to start at the beginning. So. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, I'm excited about this. I'm excited to hear how it goes and see what happens, how it rolls out from here. Um, yeah, I think we, I think we don't know for sure about the launch, but as soon as we hear, the date, that's what I, I heard the same, March 2nd, but I guess we'll know for sure. They usually don't yeah. tell me stuff until like the 28th of February. We'll yeah, know. everything just says spring. Yeah. yeah. So um, I think it'll be a good thing though, because I've noticed in a lot of the challenge groups, people will say, well, I have to travel this week and I won't have a DVD player. So what should I, you know, what should I do since I can't take the 21 day fix with me? So I think this will be a nice option for people. Yeah, to at least have workouts, even if it's not the specific program that they're doing at that time, they'll still have options to, to use. So. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you. That was really helpful. Um, okay, and we're going to wrap it up, Terry, <laughs> with you. <laughs> Given us inspiration for the week, for the month. <laughs> I don't know if I have a lot of inspiration. I, I just grabbed inspiration from this book I'm reading. And yes, I am reading a book, everybody, which I'm not very good at doing. And I think this is why Kathleen is making me do the inspiration this week. <laughs> it's true. 
<laughs> I read. I think I'm on like page 40 something in this book. So I'm very proud of myself. But I am learning too. Um, I do much better with my personal development with like listening to things and watching videos and things like that. Books are very hard for me. But I'm reading Eat That Frog um, with some of my own teammates. They're reading it as well. And so I'm just giving you some takeaways really quick. Okay. So essentially, I, just of what I've read so far, and I felt like I was like, oh, I don't have to read this book because the very first thing it said was always work from a list, um, which I do. I always work from a list. So I was like, I don't have to read anymore. I think I've mastered this. But then I read on. So it says, you know, when something new comes up, add it to your list before you do it. You can increase your productivity and output by 25% and add about two hours a day by just doing that, by making your list, okay? And then it talks about how you need to prioritize your lists, you know, make different lists, a master list, make a list for the day, a list for the week, a list for the month, which again, I do. So I was like, okay, I got this. I'm really good with lists. And then I got a little shaken up because it was, well, it basically said, make sure you are taking the lists that are, or the thing on your list that you don't want to do, like the big frog, take that and do it first and put all the other little mundane things below it. And so what I was doing, because I felt good about myself, is doing all the little things, you know, because I could check them off my list and I felt good because I had like five things that I did but that one big thing was like hanging below. So after I started like doing this, I just this last week, okay, I've been reading this. I'm like, okay, it has helped so much and I feel like a weight is lifted. So my inspiration, eat the frog, the big frog first, okay, and then save all the other little crud for later because you don't really need to do it. Um, it's not going to change your day. It's not going to change your life. Um, and so I guess it's my inspiration for the week, the day, I don't know. Um, but it is a good book and it's a very easy read. It's taking me a while, but for me it's good and, and I like it and I feel like it's, it's helping. That lesson has helped so far. So. I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, perfect. Well, we are just a little over uh, 10 o'clock. So I want to wrap up for tonight. So what I did want to talk about the strategy for March. So I'll just post in the Inspiration Nation and encourage any, any of the other leaders or people that have groups planned for March already. We'll just, we'll, we'll create a file again and encourage anybody to use that to invite people to for challenge groups and, and stuff like that. But, um, but also, I just want to say thanks so much for getting on, everybody. I really love seeing all of you. And thank you to all the people that shared a bit with us tonight. Um, it was It's so helpful to hear what other people are doing. And, and I, I always take notes because I find it so helpful for me to hear what everybody's doing. Um, and um, so we'll talk again in two weeks. If anybody has something in particular that you'd like to talk about or that you'd like to share or you'd like to learn more about, then just please let us know so that we can get that together um, again for, for two weeks from tonight. I don't have the date, but yeah, wait, I can get it. <laughs> that would be March, um, March 10th. So we'll put, mark that on your calendar and we'll meet here again March 10th. So thanks again. Have a good night. And let's finish February strong. I know a lot of you are, are already crushing your goals, which is awesome. <laughs> All right, take care. Good night. Good night, everybody.